right, I'm back. All right, so we've got to get through this. Um, we've got to get to annotation, and we've got to get to articulating this onto paper eventually in a real world. So I can't be taking any more museum trips and waxing nostalgic. I've really got to cut that, cut that down. In any event, the book goes into the ceilings and creating ceilings, and it breezes through it in two or three paragraphs. It doesn't spend nearly enough time on it. Um, so we're, we're going to go back to it, but it does spend a, a considerable amount of time on the, on the roof modeling methods. So let me, let me get that under our belts first, and then I'm going to go back and I'll put together uh, uh, the ceiling uh, tutorial. Um, in any event, I'll have to customize that a little bit. All right, so this is, this is a certification objective, understanding um, roof modeling methods. In today's construction environment, roofs come in a great number of shapes and sizes. They can be as simple as a pitch shed roof or can involve complex double curved surfaces or intersecting vaults. Once you understand the fundamental concepts, tools, and logic pertaining to roofs, you will be able to design almost any roof shape. Roofs are similar to floors and ceilings because they are sketch-based elements and can be defined as generic types or with specific material assemblies. You can also change a roof element from one type to another in the same manner as you can a floor or ceiling. A fundamental difference between floors and roofs is that a roof's thickness is generated above, is generated above its reference line, above its reference level, not below. You can also easily create slopes and roofs by defining slopes in the roof sketch lines. In general, roofs can be constructed in four different ways, by footprint, by extrusion, modeled in place, or by face. Before we start into how to create the roofs themselves, let's take a look at some of the importance uh, important instance properties for the roof family. These properties will need to be set properly to get the desired roof type. So there's base level, room bounding related to mass, base offset from level, cutoff level, cutoff offset, rafter cut, fascia depth, rafter or truss, maximum ridge height, slope, thickness, volume, area, image, comments, mark, phase, created, phase demolished. So. Uh, a lot of them are new, uh, and some of them you see consistent with most of the instance parameters that come with most of the elements we put in. Um, now, the base level. As in other Revit elements, this is the level at which the roof is placed. Now, it's going to ask me to draw a roof. So, why don't I, before I go into each of those parameters, why don't I draw it, and then we can talk, and I'll go back, we'll talk about it, so you can see it on the screen. So, uh, constructing a, a, a roof by footprint, the first one of four, remember? Footprint extrusion model in place and by face, right? So, those are the four. And in 2020, there's a little, some more bells and whistles. All right, so, by footprint, by, footprint, by extrusion, um, roof by face and modeled in place with the component, right? We can place the component and model a roof, what, right? It's going to ask us, well, what are we modeling? Well, I was, that was place a component, but we could do it by uh, model in place. And we say roofs, and that is one other way. And that's not um, for this particular one. We're going to go by footprint. So we use the construct of uh, the foot by uh, roof by footprint method to create any standard roof that more or less follows the shape of the footprint of the building and is a simple combination of roof pitches. These roofs are based on, sketch, uh, on a sketch shape that you define in plan view at the soffit level and that can be edited at any time during the development of a project from plan and axon, 3D views, axon metric. The shape can be drawn as a simple loop of lines using the line tool, or can be created using the pick walls method, which also should result in a closed loop of lines. To guide you through the creation of a roof by footprint and explain some of the main principles and tools, we offer a brief exercise demonstrating these steps. In a new project, using any default template, open a level one plan view and create a building footprint similar to the figure I'm about to draw. Make sure the height of the walls is set to unconnected 20 feet or 6,000 millimeters. Activate the level two plan and select the architectural tab in the ribbon and click roof, roof by footprint. From the draw panel on the modified create roof footprint tab, select the pick walls tool. This should be the default. When you have chosen to create a roof by footprint, the, footprint, the options bar 
displays the following settings. Change the overhang value to one foot. Let's stop there. So, I've got to create uh, some walls first on level one. I'll create a basic eight inch generic wall. Come out like this, like this. I'm going to have to change my section line a little bit. I'm not happy with the, with the placement of it. Um, I should be okay. okay. That's considered one wall. Good. Let me just move this puppy uh, a little bit over. I want it to get right in the middle of that section box. And more or less between the elevation lines. Uh, the elevation, those little houses are the east, west, north, south elevation. All right, so we have it open in uh, 3D. We have the north, the north view, and I didn't set these walls properly. Let's see, are they up to are they up to 20? No, they're only up to 10. So I'm gonna have to select all of them. Hopefully, I get all of them. I don't. I did, and make sure that the uh, top constraint is unconnected, and that the top height is 20 feet. 20 feet. And we will apply, and it'll go up to the top uh, level three, 20. Which wasn't in there. I drew in that level for this exercise. All right, so unconnected 20, level 1, center of the line, blah, 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 blah. I see these are all good. Now, um, activate the level 2 plan, which is activated. And I'm going to uh, create a roof uh, with the footprint. So go roof, roof, roof by footprint. Make sure pick walls is activated. Boundary line. Notice slope line. Just notice that. So, I want you to read through that, and I want you to experiment with that tool on your own. Anyway, so we're going to pick them. So we're in the second um, second floor, and we're going to pick uh, the walls that are going to define our roof. So I'll pick uh, this one. And if you notice, the uh, I didn't, the overhang is set to one. Notice the within the context of um, invoking the tool, we've got uh, some other things popped up here. Align eaves. Eaves are a different height. Um, uh, so some adjustments with the overhang. Adjust uh, ease by changing their heights. Uh, aligns ease by changing the size of the overhang. Now we'll get into that. But if you notice that this first wall that I picked, it does indeed uh, have a, uh, a roof um, location line symbol, um, and that it, um, it defines the slope of this roof, and it has an overhang of one. But now we could select if we hit tab, we select all of them. Right? Now we have all of them. Now if you look, they all have an overhang of one. And they're all defining the slope. They're all defining the slope. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight walls, all of which are def defining the slope. So when you have chosen to create a, a roof by footprint, the option bar displays the following settings. Change the overhang value to one, or uh, one foot, or 300 millimeters. Now, to define whether you want a slope or flat roof, use the defined slope checkbox in the options bar. The overhang parameter allows you to define the value of the roof overhang beyond the wall. When the extend into wall to core is, is, un, um, is, selected, is checked, the overhang is measured from the wall core. And we're going to check that. Uh, we're not going to check the box, but we're going to we're gonna check the math. Um, if the option is deselected, the overhang is measured from the exterior face of the wall. Okay? That's going to be, that, that will be a, uh, an important parameter. And we'll see that in section when we, when we detail the wall. All right, so after defining these steps, place the cursor over one of the walls without clicking and using the tab key, select all connected walls. A dashed line will indicate the final edge of the overhang. Once all uh, are highlighted, click one of the walls to complete the overhang sketch. We got it. We got the overhang sketch. We're going to have to pick one of the walls. All right. Now, select the three walls within the alcove. Now, if I get into the modify, if I select this one, notice its pitch. And look at the overhang. It's already dimensioned. You'd see one foot. And 
and um, if I select the hold on control, select this one, and I select this one. Now, if we look at the properties of this sketch line, you'll see defines roof slope and the overhang and the slope of this particular alcove um, where it's going to join with the, the ridge, the rafter, with the, with the ridge joist, right? It's going to do that type of math. It'll do, and these are the hard, one of the hardest, hardest things to draw by hand. Uh, at least for me, they were when I was in architectural school. These are difficult. Now, um, this is where utilizing the power of computers is uh, it's important. Computer is a tool. All right, so it's saying to uh, that it, we all want to define the roof slope. So uncheck that box. Finish, uh, click the finish edit mode icon in the mode panel of a ribbon. If you're prompted with the question, would you like to attach the higher walls to the roofs, click the yes button, activate a 3D view, and your roof should look like the image that you're about to see, hopefully. Okay, so let's just do it like that. Lines must be in closed loops. And I continue, what happened here? These didn't get closed? What happened? What I break? What I break? Didn't close these two. It happens. Let's see if that'll work. Would you like to attach the highlighted walls to the roof? Yes, but why'd you put the roof um, at the? Well, we never brought it up to level three. Um, attach and brought it down to level two. So that's not that's not acceptable. It didn't do what we wanted it to do. If the shape of the roof does not correspond to your expectations, you can edit the footprint. Yes, we're going to do that. First of all, the base level technically should be level three. Right? And then let's see if it'll go up. There we go. Yes, we'd like to attach. Yes, okay, good. All right, so we're back to normal. I'm not uh, too unhappy. All right, well, again, uh, the, uh, it got cut off because, as you'll see, base offset from level, cut off level none. And as you can see, the top of the roof got cut off. And is it because we're in this bounding box, is that what it is, Michael? There you go, Michael. Don't drive yourself nuts. All right, the section box. Now we can see. Okay, so as you can see, it, it didn't let these lines define a slope. So now let's change that and let it let let's let it define the slope and watch what happens. So if we go back and we select this alcove uh, line edge uh, sketch line, hold down control, select this one and this one, and then uh, select define slope. You'll see that indeed. Indeed, it actually cut back to the ridge joist, to the ridge of the roof. And in elevation, north elevation, you can see. That's not a problem. It's going to be a little bit more money, I'm going to go into a zoom. Could very well be. Three cuts, four cuts. And that's a lot of cuts, right? Is that a lot of cuts? I don't know. A carpenter, if I had a carpenter over my shoulder, Maybe a carpenter over my shoulder can give me some instant tips. Now, we talked a little bit about if it wasn't up to our standards. So let me just get this back to the, uh, that doesn't define the roof slope. Let's see if I went back far enough. And I did. Okay, so it doesn't define the roof slope. But it just so happens to be that the way this roof is positioned, I put this so far past center that you can see it had a direct impact on the roof. I don't want to cut through the ridge joist. Let's just do this back and notice how the parametric bi or the bidirectional associativity of the software allows you to, being that there's a, a bounding relationship, a parametric relationship to, to the floors and the roof, that you'll see that it'll adjust itself accordingly as you change the, the shape of the building. 
So that's really cool, right? First of all, without even going any further than that. But let's just get a little more equidistant. No, it's a little better. It's a little more equidistant. So now, if the shape of the roof does not correspond to your expectations, you can select the roof and select Edit Footprint from the Mode panel in the Modify Roofs tab to return to Sketch Mode, which we did. We can select the roof and Edit Footprint. To change the slope definition or angle of individual portions of the roof while editing a roof's footprint, select the sketch line of the roof portion for which you want to change the slope and toggle Check the Defined Slope button in the Options bar. Toggle the Defines Roof Slope parameter in the Properties palette or right click and choose Toggle Slope Defining. If you mistakenly made all roof sides with slope but wanted to make a flat roof, you could tab plus select all sketch lines that form the roof shape and clear the defined slope box. Then select the blue grips and dragging them either up or down to make the roof pitch uh, steeper or shallower. This is a great way to make quick, uh, although not precise, edits to the roof pitch. Well, um, that's not good. If we can't be precise, then um, we'll, we'll look at it, but I'm not going to be satisfied with that. So let's also look at the next paragraph, which states that roof slope can be measured in two different ways, as an angle or as a, percenting, a percentage rise. You can find all slope measuring options in the Manage tab by selecting Project Units in the Project Settings panel, and then selecting Slope to open the Format dialog box. If the current slope value is not in units you want to have, suppose it displays a uh, percentage, but you want it to display as an angle, change the roof, uh, change the slope units in the format dialog box, you will not be able to do that while editing the roof slope. Setting here means specifying the way you measure slopes for the entire project. So, project units. Slope. As you can see, we can set it as a rise per 12 inches, rounded to the nearest half inch. Um, or we can set it as a 1 to ratio, a ratio to 12, a ratio to 10, uh, a rise to 12, a rise to 1 foot, 0 inches, a rise to 1,000 millimeters, decimal degrees, or a percentage. Let's leave it at rise to 12, uh, and I'll show you why. Because if we look at this roof and we click on it, we're going to see there is a slope. The whole roof is being controlled by a slope of uh, 9 inches per 12, which is uh, 36.87 degrees. And if we actually look at that in elevation, and we put that to the test and we annotate and we, we angular measure that and we measure that, you'll see it's 36.87 degrees. So uh, if we were to change that pitch to 42.51 degrees or, or, damn it, I just, or a pitch of 11, 12, 11 uh, inches per 12 inches, you'll see this will come down to 42.51 degrees, right? So if we select the roof, if we select the roof and we come down to 11 12s, 11 per 12, if that uh, dimension stays associative, which it did, it'll bring us down to 42.51 degrees. And the same holds true if we went down to uh, 6 per 12. It's going to be a bit less pitched. It's going to be uh, definitely uh, less inclined. But as you can see, we do that well within the parameters of the slope. Now, there's nothing to say that we could have changed this project unit to percentage, right? And this is the other way. Um, as a percentage, we could have said from now on, we want this as a percentage. Instead of giving it that, we could come here directly. And the pitch, when I select the roof now, in the properties palette, in the parameters, the slope uh, percentage is 50. Now, if I said I wanted this at 36.87, I would get it inputted based on a percentage of 100, of 90, right? Is it, is it 90? A percentage of, hold on, a percentage of 100. On a percentage of 100, right? 45 times 2, 4, 6, 8, right? 45 over 100. All right, so. I'm not going to get myself twisted in that uh, vortex. Um, so it's based on your preference. But again, 
um, it can be set in increments of 10. And it all, it's all going to depend on your units. So let's just make sure that uh, this thing is back to where it was and it's not. Let's get it back to here. Um, and I think that's a relatively good, quick explanation. And these roofs get much more complicated uh, with, the, with the overhangs and, and the way at which um, the uh, supporting members and the roof uh, support, uh, structural members all tied to each other and how they're displayed, how they're displayed uh, in different views and how you can change a lot of the parameters. So they uh, get into it a little bit, uh, but not nearly as much. So we do have to go back, if you recall. Now that we have the roof, we have to talk about what actually um, happens in these properties. So again, we have this roof. We could, we could have easily made it a flat roof, right? We could have edited the footprint. Um, we could have went to level three, opened the view. We could have went back, oops, to level three. We could have grabbed each one of these, and we could have um, unchecked defined slope, right? Turn that off. So now, if it doesn't define the slope, and I hit OK, we're going to get a flat roof, which um, can't form angular dimension. Oh, because of this cut. All right, well, uh, you get the point. And you can grip it. You can grip the roof as well, right? If indeed you have your roof and you don't like the pitch, there's nothing saying that you can't grab one of these control points once you be, and you'll see what it says. Roof, basic roof, generic 12 inch shape handle. You can drag it down. It's not as precise. Um, it's definitely not as precise, but you'll get a basic idea. Because if you look, um, you don't see the slope parameter in there. You don't see the slope parameter anymore. If it's not as precise, if I went 11 12th, 11 per 12th, then it's precise, right? And, and that's the precision. So 6 12s, 8 12s, 10 12s. I'm sure there's, there's all sorts of uh, angles between 0 and 90 that you could pitch this roof. Um, <laughs> but again, remember, um, it's a circle. So, uh, and again, you could, uh, you're doing this, um, you're measuring these angles, and it's not going to matter whether it's counter clockwise or counterclockwise, um, which is good. All right, so now this is a little tricky because there's a lot of these little parameters in there. So, before we start into how to create the rules themselves, let's take a look at some of the important instance properties for the roof family. These properties will need to be set properly to get the desired roof type, and they are all found in the properties palette. Base level. As in other Revit elements, this is the level at which the roof is placed. The roof moves with this level if the level changes height. So, again, it's said to put on level 2. The, the wall heights were 20. Level 2's elevation was 10. So that's what it wanted, and it would have brought those walls down. That's why I created level 3, and I wanted to put the roof on level 3, as a base level and have the walls come up to meet it. So that's the difference between what happened and the exercise. Now, that's the base level. Room bounding, now this is really important. When this is checked, the roof geometry has an effect on calculating room area and volume. Huge, when we get into spaces, huge. Especially for analytical purposes. And you gearheads with the MEP side, you all know, you know what I mean, as well as the architectural side. And it's always that, I think there's always going to be a little bit of that animosity. I don't know. I can feel it. I can feel it. Anyway, related to mass, this property is active only if the roof has been created with the roof by, by mass, by face method, which we discussed floors by face in a mass. We haven't discussed uh, roof by face in a mass yet, but that's one of the other tools in the roof toolbar pull down. All right, so we're going to get that, but I don't want to go off on a tangent. So now, base offset from level, like anything else, um, if it was constrained to level two, uh, we could offset it two inches above that for some reason, right? Depending on the makeup of the wall. Um, but um, it is what it is. it'll still be constrained to the level. It'll just always be two, two inches above it when you move the level, right? If we were to go and move the level three, we told it to be wall bounding. If we bring the level elevation down, we're going to see 
that that has a direct impact on the roof as well as the wall, which is good. And the wall can host, the roof can host things too, just like anything else. But if you delete the roof, you can delete anything, any of the hosted elements. But this is the, the power of the bi-directional sensitivity. Um, <laughs> with, with, with linked files, they're, they're linked files. It's, it's a web-based tool. It's a cloud tool. It's designed to work up in the clouds, man. Up in the clouds. Up in dreamy dreamland. All right, so I'm not going to go off on a psychedelic trip, but cutoff level, this is really good. Many roof shapes require a combination of several roofs on top of each other. For this, you need to cut off the top of a roof to accommodate the creation of the next roof in sequence. Well, think of a castle and think of the spires on the side. And I don't remember the name for them right now, but it's where Rapunzel, Rapunzel gets locked away in the tower. Um, and again, there are conical levels on top, right? And, and the same goes true for this particular uh, pitched roof. Um, you can create a roof with a level, maybe offset within the footprint of the roof, and then go up again with walls, and then there's another roof. So I bring that up only because you can set the cut level. So if, well now, as you can see, this, this roof exists on uh, the third level. If I was to pick the roof, and I was going to try and do a cutoff level, well, I only have three choices. I can't cut it off as a level it's on. So if I was to then just go into architecture and just create another level and make it, um, eight, make it eight feet above or something like that, eight feet above that level, now we got level four. And if I was to select the roof now and I was to uh, do a cutoff level, I could see four. Highlighted walls are attached to, but miss the highlighted targets. Is that going to give it to me anyway? Yes, it still will. All right, so as you can see now, it basically plumb cut it flush to the new level. And you can build walls on that, on level four. four. But if I went to level four, there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't uh, you know, I have to turn, I have to go down in my cut plane to see it. Uh, but you get the point. You can start drawing uh, walls here and create new roofs, roof levels. Or create a roof on top of that. The roof hangs a little more like a, uh, like the Chinese and the, the Asian and Asian folks. The uh, Far East, you see the Far East roofs, you'll, you'll get a better idea, right? They, they tend to have concentric layers of recessing roofs. Uh, it's just one of those things. All right, so that's cutoff level. So we have, um, let me close that. We see everything. Um, we turn off level four. In any event, okay, so before we go off on a tangent, uh, we get the cutoff level and we have the cutoff offset. The cutoff offset, when the cutoff tool is applied, the cutoff offset value also becomes active and allows you to set the cutoff distance from the level indicated on the cutoff level parameter. Like anything else, it's an offset from the cutoff level. So then you have, uh, you have a base point. Uh, cutoff level uh, is level four. Cutoff offset from that, maybe two inches, three inches, four inches. Maybe you're creating uh, uh, a work of art. All right, so we have to cut. This defines the eave shape. And we're going to get into this. We can't get into this in this video. It's going too long. But I'll get into it in the next video with ceilings. So we're going to have to show all of these, these details, roof sections, uh, in, 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 in detail section. A really, really detailed section, and the model only goes to a certain extent. Uh, it'll get you there. It'll get you. It'll get you there, and that's just a matter of you annotating it, and then you have them forever and ever and ever, right? If, you, if that's your thing, if you build this type of structure all the time, this is going to make it so much easier for you. This will be your template for all of your Dunkin' Donuts or all of your uh, your Lowe's or all of your uh, big box stores. Uh, or your pizzerias. If that's what you do. You can, can you can customize this based on what type of project you're going to build, and there are all sorts of things, right? Auditoriums, uh, parks, homes, commercial retail. Uh, uh, again, and, and again, if this is just if you're looking for a space, a volumetric space, 
that that's all you do is fill in uh, volumetric spaces with with, uh, with 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 infrastructure, whether it be commercial or retail or laboratory, medical. You can create a customized cookie cutter profile that you can apply to every volume volume of space that you find that you need. As long as it's, then it's just a matter of getting the, the volume of the volume of the space to conform to yours. And a lot of things come in rectangular uh, cubes, right? They, a, lot, a lot of things come in cubes. So the thing about this, though, is when we're getting into this, this room bounding, you know, you, you, you have to think of yourself also, right? By doing this, <laughs> you're in a room. <laughs> you're moving the walls. You got to remember, you're working a lot of the move those walls too close to yourself and too close to somebody else, right? You don't want to box somebody in and get boxing yourself. And this is why, um, before I get to the rafter cut and the rafter truss, I, I got I to gotta, uh, bring that up. So let me get through it and I'm going to reiterate that. Rafter cut, this defines the eave shape. You can select from plum cut, two cut plum, or two cut square when either two cut plum or two cut square is selected. The fascia depth primer is activated and you can set the value to the, the depth. With rafter, the offset of the base is measured from the inside of the wall. If you choose truss, the plate offset from the base is measured from the outside of the wall. Now, the difference between the two is basically the plate is basically the front. It's like you have a silk plate, you have a, the front of a fascia, you have a plate in a soffit as well. So it's that, that plate that's going to be the distance from the cut. Um, depending on the cut. And I'm going, to, I'm going to get into that. I'm not a carpenter, okay? I wasn't, I'm not St. Joseph. I'm not St. Joseph. Um, but there's, there's, uh, there's other steps we have to take before we can get there. Now, that was constructing a roof by, uh, by footprints. Okay, we, we have to do, a, apply a roof by extrusion, extrusion and we need to answer all that. So let's just hold our, uh, let's just hold that, hold that thought, because there's so much more to this, and it's just an intuitive platform. It's, uh, it's a waste. And, and, and granted, there's lots of uh, spin-offs on these types of platforms, but you only get, you, you're gonna get what you pay for. I'm letting you know. All right, in any event, uh, let me uh, cut this one short, and uh, we'll uh, catch up, uh, we'll pick it up on the other end. Toodaloo.